some of the really fascinating research on subjective well-being shows how bad we are at anticipating it and at recognizing it. Uh, mm -hmm. To me, the the experiments that that are really really shattering is are the uh, uh, what is it a dime on the on the copy machine? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, students come in and they're going to take a questionnaire and th they're told, well, you have to uh, photocopy the questionnaire before you take it. Uh, and so there's a photocopy machine right over there and there's a dime that somebody's left on the copy machine and everybody sees it and they pick it up and put it in the pocket. But then when you look at the, and the, and the questionnaire is a deep questionnaire about how well their life has been going so far. Right, yeah. And if you found a dime, your life as a whole, has been going a whole lot better than if you didn't find the dime. Right. That's yeah, it's really stunning. Uh, another uh, survey, I think uh, Ed Diener's group did this one. Um, this was done telephone. You call people up, it's a phone survey, and you're asking them about their life and how well it's going, and compared with what they wanted and so forth. And you've got a weather map. You know what the weather's like there. And Half the time, you ask, you comment on the weather. You say, how is the weather there today? And they say, oh, it's a beautiful sunny day. The other half, you don't say anything about the weather. It turns out, if you ask about the weather, you cancel the effect, because they've noticed, they say, <laughs> it's a beautiful day. If you don't ask about the weather, then if it's sunny there, their life has gone a whole lot better as a whole than, than if, now, mm -hmm. now these, are, these are very robust. They've been, they've been duplicated uh, 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 many times. And it really does sort of stop you in your tracks a little bit, and you realize that if you had a dream of uh, Harnessing science to get people to characterize what their own well-being is, and then we'll try to maximize that. You realize that it's a sort of a will of the wisp that isn't necessarily. I mean, if we could do it, that would be something else. If and 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 it's worth remembering that since we can't do that in practically. We tend always to just fall back on money. You know, that's the thing you can count. Mm -hmm. And, but we should never forget that what we really want to maximize is something which doesn't come in units that can be counted. And that that's probably even the wrong approach to thinking about, about well-being. Uh, because, uh, oh yeah, one, other, one of, the, of the other features, and, and I, you mentioned the hedonic treadmill. Um, it is a very strongly confirmed fact that paraplegics, as a group, have a greater life satisfaction, they feel better about their lives than millionaires, than, than multimillionaires. Now, given that, though, can you imagine going to the, to the, uh, christening or bar mitzvah of your of your friend's son and saying, "May you grow up to be a paraplegic." You know, I mean, <laughs> or maybe a paraplegic millionaire, even better. Well, maybe not. <laughs> I mean, I mean, now there's there's explanations about this, and it's very much what what Owen was suggesting like to too. Me. The paraplegics uh, have to brutally reconsider and rework right. their sense of what's going to be important in their lives, and they do a pretty good job of it.